The sound of silence is probably something that you have been hearing. You have been down on your knees, pleading with God, pleading with him for relief from your afflictions. You have been calling out to him to change your loved one. You've been crying to him to give you strength to overcome your weaknesses. But in all this crying and all this pleading with God and all this praying, all you have been hearing is this. Silence. This morning as we meditate on the words of Job, I would like to share with you some thoughts of what this silence actually means. Number one, the silence actually means that you are still alive. God has spared you. You must understand that people in the Old Testament understood that hearing the voice of God could actually be fatal. In Deuteronomy, excuse me, Exodus chapter 20, it said this, when the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain and smoke, they trembled with fear. And they said to Moses, speak to us yourself and we will listen, but do not have God speak to us or we will die. So if you see lightning and then hear the thunder, you're okay. But if you hear both at the same time, then you're probably a crispy critter. What happens is, if you hear God speaking, it could be a very deadly thing. So think of it this way. When a human being speaks, right, it's at a comfortable level, a survival level. It's about 60 decibels. We keep it about 70 decibels in here with our music and our sound. But if we were to be able to speak at about 188 to 200 decibels, then that consensus says would be fatal. Something like that could probably cause an embolism or, or, or maybe even cause your lungs to burst or create a seizure or a, even a heart attack. Now, if a blue whale, blue whale, which is the loudest, the loudest creature on earth, can cry up to 188 decibels, how loud do you think its creator can speak. Yeah. So Job knows that by asking God to hear him and asking God to hear him, he may be taking a risk and putting his own life in jeopardy. And yet, even with this threat, he still has hope. And I'd like to, to share with you some of the things that he says in that passage, starting at um, verse 14, uh, there in Job chapter 13 on page 5 of your worship folder. Verse 14 begins with, uh, with Job saying this, knowing that by asking God to speak, he could die. He says, why do I put myself in jeopardy and take my life in my hands? Though he slay me, yet will I hope in him. I will surely defend my ways to his faith, to his face. Indeed, this will turn out for my deliverance, for no godless person would dare come before him. Again, verse 16, indeed, this will turn out for my deliverance. That is my proclamation to all of you this morning, that all of your pleading to God for relief, all of your crying out for your loved ones, all of your calling to God for strength to overcome your weaknesses, this will, this will turn out for your deliverance. Because number one, that silence that you hear from heaven means that God will spare you. He hasn't killed you or overwhelmed you with his presence or his voice. Your calling out and praying to him will indeed result in your deliverance. What's interesting is that as we are here on earth though, we ourselves never really actually hear a silence from heaven. 
In fact, what we hear is something doctors call tinnitus. Tinnitus is a humming or a buzzing or ringing in your ear. Apparently, all of us hear it. Some of us hear it because we've had those little hairs in our cochlea that have been damaged from, from some trauma. But others of us hear it because our brain actually tries to fill in the void with its own sound, kind of its own natural elevator music. But when there is this silence from heaven then, the world and the evil in it tries to fill in that void with its own tinnitus. Sometimes that tinnitus is the bad counsel of friends that are around us who victim blame and accuse us for doing wrong things. So you have Job here who in our passage is, is saying uh, this about his friends. This is in verse 7 there. Will you speak wickedly on God's behalf? Will you speak deceitfully for him? So often the counsel that we have around us, the tinnitus we hear in our lives, are these people who presume to speak from God, but really are not. This was something that God raged against when he was speaking through the prophet of Jeremiah um, several hundred years later. This is what God says. He says, then the Lord said to me, to Jeremiah, the prophets are prophesying lies in my name. I have not sent them or appointed them or spoken to them. They are prophesying to you with false visions, divinations, idolatries, and delusions of their own minds. Their own minds. So when we find ourselves in difficult situations, when we find ourselves hearing this silence from heaven, sometimes our own minds fills in that void with our doubts and our concerns and our worries that God is perhaps giving us the silent treatment, that he must be angry with us. This is kind of what I was feeling back in June of 2017. On June that year, on the hottest day of the year, when it was just beginning to get to be about 90 degrees, our AC broke. And it kept breaking all throughout the summer. But that wasn't the only thing that broke. And that wasn't the only problem that we had. Also, our ice maker to our refrigerator broke twice. And then sometime that month, we saw buzzing around the light in our kitchen, these little winged creatures that happened to be termites. The diagnosis was that we're going to have to have a termite treatment at the tune of $1,000, which we couldn't afford, nor could we afford to get a new AC. And that wasn't it. One day, I came home from, for lunch, and my wife told me that the stopper in the guest bathroom sink won't open. And so as I was sort of grimacing from hearing that news, the strap on this bag that I got from our ordination snapped. And then, later on, I heard that the faucet in our master bathroom would not turn on the water. And on and on it went like this all through the summer. And so as this was happening, I found myself falling down on my knees and just crying out to God saying, what? God, what? And so later on, I'm driving, later on that, about three months later, I'm driving on Swinton Avenue and sort of um, hearing or thinking about our AC breaking a second time. And I'm just gripping the steering wheel, digging my nails into it, trying not to cry. But after such a long period, after so four months of just nonstop problems and, and even now being financially in struggles because of that, I just couldn't hold the tears back anymore. And I whimpered a prayer, you know, God, it's been so long, so long. Well, when we hear these problems in our lives, when we are here and we can't have a word from God, sometimes this doubt and this depression starts to crowd in. But my prayer for all of us today is that you will have hope as you cry out in prayer, as you call out to God and say what, you will have hope. That you know that number one, God has spared you. He's not killed you, he's keeping you alive. But also, number two, that you would know that God is an active listener. 
The first thing that we learn in, in caregiving is actually not what you say or how to speak, but really how to listen. You know, when people are grieving and mourning and struggling, sometimes they just want to cry out. They just want to blow off some steam. They just want to get stuff off their chest. They just want to vent. And all they're asking you to do is listen. And that's what Job is saying to his friends here. In, in, in uh, verse 13, actually verse 6, right at the beginning there, he says, Hear now my argument. Listen to the pleas of my lips. And then in verse 13, he says, Keep silent and let me speak. Let, let come to me what may. So what I understand about people who are grieving is sometimes they'll say weird things, and, but we don't have to correct them. We can just let them get all that out. Well, God's the ultimate caregiver. He just lets us grieve. He lets us cry out. He, he hears us and listens to us. He's a shoulder to cry on. God does not interrupt us when we're crying, when we're saying, God, how long? A couple years ago, I was at a... A, an event for victims' rights, and there was a, a woman who gave, stood up and gave her testimony as the mother of a daughter who was murdered. And during that speech, she kind of talked about there was a time when she just said she was angry with God, and she cried out in anger to God, you know, why did you take my daughter? And so after that speech, I went up to her and I, and I said, you know, well, well, you know, what was the answer that you were hoping to hear? What was it that you were expecting, you know, someone to say? And she goes, nothing. I just needed to get that out. So God is a perfect caregiver. He listens. He lets us get it out. He doesn't interrupt, but he lets us speak and vent and share all of our emotions, and he's listening. He's silently and patiently listening to us. So number one, that silence from heaven is really God saying, I've spared you. But number two, it means that God is actually listening. And then as he listens, you have this promise and this hope that this will indeed turn out for your deliverance. And then number three, that silence from heaven is really quite literally a pregnant pause. For some 400 years, right? For some 400 years, from the time of Malachi to the time that Gabriel speaks to Zechariah in the temple, Israel was waiting expectantly for a Messiah to be born. And when Jesus is born, heaven speaks, amen? You got Gabriel, you got angels and hosts from heaven all speaking. And heaven continues to speak through that little boy who grows up to be that man. Heaven speaks and says to you, I do not condemn you. Heaven speaks saying, I forgive you. And heaven speaks and says, I am the resurrection and the life. Even he who dies will rise again and yet live. And the voice from heaven says, I will come back and take you to be with me where I am. That silence means that God has spared you. It means that he's an active listener, but it also means that there's this pregnant pause before something significant, something great happens. That is the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So as Job says, this indeed will turn out for my deliverance. When you look at the Hebrew, here's another way that you can understand that. What Job says, as you look at the Hebrew, he says, God is my deliverance. God is my salvation. And do you know what Hebrew word they use for salvation in that verse right there in Job chapter 13? When I saw that word yesterday, I just fell back in my chair in tears and amazement. That word that is used for salvation and deliverance is Yeshua. Raise your hand if you know what Yeshua means. Yeshua is the name Jesus. Yeshua means Savior. 
Job is saying that God is my Jesus. God is my salvation. God is my deliverance. What you can know today, the hope I want to leave with you all today is when you are crying and you're pleading with God, when you're asking him to change your loved one, to give you relief, or you're just asking for strength, know this, God is listening. Number one, he hears you, right? You has, he has spared you, but also he's an active listener. And then there's this pregnant pause as God is bringing something amazing. He's bringing you your salvation. He's bringing you Jesus Christ. Now, there were times as Jesus was on the earth that he was silent. Jesus was silent as his beaten and bloodied body sagged dead on the cross. And for three whole days, he was silent as his remains were closed up in the tomb. And now that he has ascended to heaven, once again, he seems to be silent. But here's what I want to tell you all today, is that Jesus seems silent because he now wants you to hear the voice of God and the Holy Spirit right here on earth. So number four, that silence means that God wants you to hear the Holy Spirit speaking to you on earth. You see, when Jesus left, his Holy Spirit came upon his disciples. Now we get to hear the voice of God speaking to us over the tinnitus, over all of the words of doubt and everything that crowds our mind. We get to hear the word of God spoken to us in human words, a comfortable 60 decibels that we might be alive to hear them. So as Jesus rose from the dead and appeared to his disciples, they began to speak by the Holy Spirit and no one could get them to shut up. They tried arresting them and flogging them and even threatening with death, but they kept on talking about Jesus Christ their Lord. And even when they did die, they had written down their words in what we call scripture in the Bible, and even now, those words echo out to us 2,000 years later, declaring to us that Jesus Christ is Lord. Even now, God is not silent, but he's speaking to us on earth by his Holy Spirit. And now he speaks through all of you. If you listen closely to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talked about everyone who says Jesus Christ is Lord, as we confess in our Apostles' Creed, all of you then are speaking by the Holy Spirit. And it isn't only with words, but it's also as you use your gifts and talents in serving Christ, serving others, and what? Changing lives, amen. God, the Holy Spirit, is speaking now, even on earth, to all of you and the world. So as I was suffering through all of those challenges back in 2017, Something interesting happened. I knew that at some point, God was going to hear me. I also understood that this was indeed going to turn out for my deliverance. And so one day, I actually got a phone call. I heard the voice of God speaking through the person on the other end of the line. He introduced himself as Harold Rodriguez. He said that he was the chairperson of the call committee of Our Savior Lutheran Church, and they wanted to have me come and visit to see if they wanted to call me as the pastor. I believe that all the things that were happening to me in June, from June of 2017, were so that I would be all the more attentive when God finally did speak, when God spoke through you, our Savior, and your call committee to me that I would listen closely and not blow off his words, but know that he was actually saying something to me, finally, at last. 
And so when you called me, I said yes. But in the days since that time, and in the days that follow that time, God has indeed blessed me. He has indeed restored things. We got a new AC. The termites were treated. All the things that I said were broken got fixed. And even more, I got to hear God speaking to me through all of you, as you have called me to speak on your behalf as your pastor. Jesus Christ is silent in heaven so that we can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit here on earth, that we can hear him over the, the, the numbing ring and the buzz of the tinnitus and all the doubt, so that we can hear those reassuring words that he loves us. So today, if you do find yourself on your knees, if you find yourself calling out to God for relief, if you find yourself pleading to him on behalf of a loved one in your family, if you're just crying out and asking God for strength, I want you to know those four things. That one, God has spared you. Number two, he's an active listener. He hears you and he's listening. Number three, it's only a pregnant pause until Christ comes again. And number four, he wants you to hear. He wants you to hear him God, the Holy Spirit, speaking to us on earth through the body of Christ and all of their gifts and talents that have joined us here together in the worship of the one and only, the Son of God, our Yeshua, our deliverance, our salvation. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.